Okay, everyone. So um, thank you for making the craft. And now if, you, if you're not finished, you can definitely finish that and be sure to take a picture and share it with us. Um, but now we have a special uh, talk. And so uh -huh. we have Ted Callis and he will be speaking to us today. So um, Ted, you can take it away. Um, I'm having a little trouble sharing my screen at the moment. Go to the bottom of the Zoom window and you should see a green button that says share. Exactly. Oh, got it. Thank you. How's that look? See me yet? That looks good. And then you just have to find that present button again. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Okay, ready? Yep, you can go ahead. Thanks, Ted. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Just want, uh, my name is Ted Pallas. I work at the New Jersey DEP, the uh, New Jersey Geological Survey. And I wanted to give a little talk on New Jersey mastodons tonight. Um, about three years ago, I did a report on um, all of the, the Massaton discoveries in, um, in New Jersey, and I put it into the report and I wrote a little bit about the history and, and what happened in New Jersey, how they were found and things like that. Okay, so what is a Mastodon? Mastodon is a large extinct elephant-like animal. They had a coat of reddish brown fur and tusks. The scientific name for New Jersey Mastodons is Mammut Americanum. Uh, Mammut comes from the Greek word earth burrow, burrower. Uh, it was because in the Middle Ages, tusks were unearthed in Europe and they were thought to, um, to be from earth burrowing creatures or they were actually mastodons. Um, Ma American mastodons were among the largest living land animals during, during the ice age in New Jersey. <clears throat> the, the earliest elephant, uh, was not the mastodon. It was traced back to the erythrium, the earliest extinct proboscidean, which was animals with trunks. Erythrium is the oldest, smallest, and most primitive known elf, rel elephant relative. They originated in Northern Africa near Morocco. And there's a picture on the right. Uh, here's the mastodon family tree. Um, so, you go back 60 million years to the uh, erythrium and you go up to the right and you follow it. Um, the first red one is the, is the ma mammoth, which is the Macedon and uh, went extinct about 10,000 years ago. And the mammoth was actually uh, lived a lot longer only up until about 3,600 years ago, but that also went extinct. And um, as you see, the two blue ones are the living elephants that we still have today. Uh, there are different between mastodons and mammoths. Um, to the left is a mastodon. Uh, they were browsers. And to the right, you have the mammoths, which were grazers. Uh, mastodons have, have straighter tusks and pointier teeth, while mammoths have curled tusks and flat teeth for chewing um, grasses. Here's a picture of the mastodon on the right teeth on, and mammoth on the left. Uh, if you can see the, the mammoth tooth is, is pretty flat and is for grinding the grains, whereas the mastodon on the right, you can see these lumps and bumps. So they were grinding uh, twigs and uh, sticks for their, for their diet. Uh, both of these teeth are on display at the New Jersey State Museum. So come, Mastodon's coming to America. Um, it is widely thought that Mastodon's reached North America about 23 million years ago by way of Siberia and the Bering Strait land bridge in the Miocene epoch. You can see the picture on, on the right um, is where they, they crossed. Um, the Mastodon's of, of North America thrived in woody, swampy environments. And when it was sufficiently cold, they range as far south as Central America as well as Florida and other warmer areas when it was colder at the time during the Ice Age. 
Massons are considered the most famous of New Jersey's Ice Age mammals. Massons lived during the Pleistocene or Ice Age, which lasted from about 2.6 million to about 12,000 years ago. And, in, and they lived into the beginning of the Holocene period, which is uh, the current period. Uh, they are herbivores. They make mostly twigs, cones, branches of spruce trees, which cover New Jersey when they lived here. Massadon remains have been discovered in 13 of New Jersey's 21 counties. Uh, New Jersey Massadon migration and habitat. The map on the right shows all of the 52 documented Massadon fossil uh, discoveries in New Jersey. The blue line shows the southern extent of the Wisconsin glacier. Uh, you can see here across northern New Jersey and out onto Long Island. Um, during the Ice Age, Massadon lived south of the glacier, which covered the uh, northern part of the state. And they mig the Massadons mi would migrate north as the uh, glacier melted and retreated into Canada. And as you can see, there's, you know, there's Massadons out into the Atlantic Ocean, and that's not because they were swimming, but because the shoreline of New Jersey during the Ice Age was 70, 80 miles farther out offshore because a lot of the water of the ocean was um, locked up in the, in the frozen um, glaciers during the Ice Age. So there was more, more land that they could, they could roam. Mastodons during the Ice Age in New Jersey. Uh, during the last glacial period, parts of New, northern New Jersey, including around High Point, were under an ice sheet nearly two almost two miles thick. So this picture is from um, American Museum of Natural History in New York showing um, um, Macedon and mammoths um, roaming the land. And this could be from say, you know, with a little imagination, maybe Southern Morris County, um, Warren County, Somerset County, you know, the you know, the, the Macedons roaming around into the north where the two mile thick glaciers were, could have been like, in the distance. So dates from New Jersey Macedon fossil records range from 12,730 years to 10,995 years ago. These were um, seven or eight um, dated Macedon bones. Um, most were done, done by radiocarbon. Some were done by, say, like the peat surrounding the Macedon or a Native American encampment. Um, so the, the time when the Macedons were in New Jersey, according to the, the limited information of dating we have on Macedons, was only about 2,000 years, even though they lived, you know, much longer life. You know, I mean, they were around for maybe 30 million years. Um, but they were only in New Jersey for a short time. And um, at least that's what the data shows that we uh, collected. So New Jersey masses on discoveries. Um, all of the mostly complete mass on skeletons in New Jersey were found in North Jersey, preserved in peat bogs. And South, South Jersey, where it was drier, mostly only teeth and bones were found. South Jersey bones having been widely scattered by animals after the animal died. There were lack of peat bogs to preserve the fossils in place in the southern part of the state. Uh, one exception was the Mannington Mastodon found in Salem County, where an almost complete skeleton was found in a marl pit. So the, uh, the Mannington Mastodon was found in Mannington Township, um, New Jersey. Today, this Mastodon skeleton is on display at the Rutgers Geology Museum. And you can see on the, on the right is a picture of it. Um, the Manny Mastodon is the only full Mastodon skeleton currently on display in New Jersey today. A uh, little bit of history of the Manny to Mastodon discovery. Um, marl was a valuable fertilizer rich in calcium and carbonated lime. Um, it was found in many places in New Jersey, in, in the South Jersey. Uh, and this is where the Mannion Massanon was discovered on August 27th, 1869. The skeleton soon became a money-making curiosity. It went on display at, a, at a, a spot near the Eastview Cemetery in Salem, where a 10 cent admission was charged to enter a tent to see the Massanon, according to newspaper accounts of the day. 
The Mastodon skeleton went, then went to the Bridge and Fair, the local newspaper, the Salem Sunbeam newspaper reported 3,000 people paid to see it. Eventually, the New Jersey state childist at the time, George H. Cook, bought the skeleton for $300 and it was mounted and put on display at the Rutgers Geology Museum in, 18, it's in 1896, where it remains the centerpiece of the museum today. Uh, so a little bit about the Rutgers Geology Museum and the Bannington Mastodon. It was mounted in 1896 at Rutgers College as the university was known at the time. It occupied a space of eight by 20 feet at the north end of the room. The vintage photo on the right shows a skeleton of the Manhattan Mastodon on display in the Rutgers Geology Museum in New Brunswick in 1931. So there were many other uh, notable Mastodon discoveries in New, New Jersey. And another very famous one was called the Oberg Mastodon. On the picture on the right, you can see excavation of the Oberg Mastodon specimen in Vernon, New Jersey in Sussex County uh, in February of 1954. It was discovered when Us Gus Oberg was having a pond dug with a dragline excavator in his uh, property he wanted to build a pond. People from Rutgers University, Princeton University, the New Jersey State Museum, the New Jersey Geological Survey, and others all took part in the digging of the bones, and all these groups are represented in the picture here on the right. It was the most complete Mastodon skeleton ever discovered in New Jersey. Um, it was reconstructed and put on display in the New Jersey State Museum for many years. Uh, in this picture, Archibald McMur McMurtry on the left was the excavator digging the pond at the time, and Gus Oberg, he's on the right. He was the owner of the pond, and they're proudly showing their uh, leg bone of the mastodon they found while digging the pond. Um, originally, Gus Oberg wanted to try and sell the, uh, the mastodon bones, but he eventually decided he rather donated to the museum um, in, in for science, so, so all the people of the state could enjoy and um, they can go see it anytime. So when, after bones are, bones of masses are found, they have to be conserved and prepared before they go on display at say the um, Rutgers Geology Museum or uh, the New Jersey State Museum. Picture here on the right is the Oberg Mastodon um, it's at the Museum of Natural History in New York in the 50s. And you can see the conservators are um, uh, putting it together at this point, but they had to treat the bones so they wouldn't um, degrade and uh, they had to get them ready to go on display. So it was a big job. You know, once the bones were excavated, there was still a lot of work to get it ready to go to the museum. Um, for Oberg Mastodon, here is a um, advertisement back from the 1950s when it went, uh, was there, it was a big deal. Um, so they wanted, they had a lot of people come in and they were very um, proud to have the, the Mastodon there. Another uh, notable Mastodon find was uh, the Bojack Mastodon. It was discovered on the Bojack property in the Liberty Township, Warren County in the uh, early 1970s, 1971, during the construction of another pond. And as you can see, that's a common theme, finding Mastodon bones, um, because these ponds were um, usually peat bogs, you know, 10,000 years ago when the Mastodons were walking around, maybe moving north as the glaciers melted. And uh, they would roam into these uh, peat bogs and they were very sticky and they would get stuck and they would, you know, eventually die. They couldn't get out. And over the years, you know, they, they were totally encased in this peat and their bones were preserved and animals would not be able to rip it apart. And that's why, you know, the northern, mostly the northern uh, mastodons were better preserved and available when found. Um, this week, on the left, it was a picture of when the, the jawbone of the Bojack Mastodon was excavated. And on the right is, how it is now, it's on display at the New Jersey State Museum. Disappearing Mastodons. Okay, so 
No one knows for sure why Macedon's disappeared, but it's thought that rapid climatic swings at the end of the ice age accompanied by habitat shifts might have played a part. Uh, the spruce forest, which Macedon's fed on, disappeared from New Jersey as the glaciers migrated northward and the land dried up. The climate also got warmer, which the Macedon's didn't like, and this caused increased competition for food. Some also say hunting by humans could have played a part in their extinction and you know, the early indigenous peoples overlapped sometime with the Macedons uh, before the Macedons died out. And um, if you look at the map on the right, um, you know, it shows a lot of the Macedon uh, discoveries in New Jersey. But if you look to the north of um, where the glaciers were, as the glaciers melted and retreated northward towards Canada, the Macedons left New Jersey and they would march northward in, in a narrow gap between the mountains and the Hudson River. And this is one, uh, you know, Orange County, New York is one of the major areas in North America for Macedon uh, discoveries. Uh, many have been found there, many well preserved. Um, that's because, you know, the, they had peat bogs also there and, and they had a large concentration of Mac Macedons going through there. So that also contributed. So um, where can you find a Mastodon in New Jersey today? Um, there are five spots uh, where you can, uh, four spots. The Manga Mastodon, of course, is at the Rutgers University Geology Museum in New Brunswick. Um, the most famous one right there. Uh, Mo is located at the Sussex County Historical Museum in Newton. Um, I know the museum is open on Fridays and they don't have a complete skeleton, but they have uh, many of the bones. And like the Oberg Mastodon and uh, the Bojack, Mo was also discovered while they were digging a pond in, in the Newton area. And, uh, you know, they pulled the, the bones out of the pond. And luckily that uh, the people doing it were... Um, you know, they, they knew knew what they needed to do. They got the bones and they tried to preserve them before um, the museum people could get there. But uh, they have a nice display at that museum in Sussex County and in Newton, if you ever want to go check that out. Um, so there are some Warren County Macedons, Macedon, Macedon bones from the 1800s on display at the Newark Museum. Uh, also not a complete skeleton, but they do have some, some bones there. And uh, that's another place you can go. Um, the Bojack Mastodon from Liberty Township are in this are on this bones are on display also at the State Museum, and um, there are various Mastodon teeth which were found offshore in the Atlantic Ocean on display at the New Jersey State Museum, and a lot of the teeth found offshore were either by um, oyster dredges when they would um, clam dredges they're digging up the the shells. Uh, the harvest and they would also dig the teeth up would be um, lying on the floor because the Macedons when they die they just the teeth just like laid around um, and also like ge uh, United States Geological Survey did other geological studies out in the ocean and they would um, bring some up sometimes also so um, you know those are the museums where you can go see one if you want. Um, so the report I did uh, back in 2019 called Garden State Mastodons. It's um, the web, if, if anybody's interested, the web address is on the screen there and you can go check it out. And it just talks about um, a lot of stuff I mentioned and plus more of including, um, you know, all the discoveries that were, were documented. And questions? Thank you, Ted. Um, so the Google Doc has a lot of questions for you. Okay. So uh, I'm, just, I'm trying to find how I get to that at the moment. Can you maybe read? 
I'm not, I'm having trouble finding uh, the Google Doc at the moment. Maria, do you want to read the questions? Maybe that'll be a little easier. Oh, just give me one second. Sorry about that. Pull it up for you. All right. So the first question we have here for you, Ted, is how do we know the color of mastodon fur from fossils? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm I'm not sure. It could be that they found some somewhere that still had the the fur on uh, the mastodon, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's a, I'm not sure about that one. Okay, so the next question we have for you, actually it was a question from my mom. Um, are mammoths and mastodons ancestors of modern elephants? And then her other question was, like what are the tusks made out of? Are they made out of ivory? That's a good question too, I'm not sure. I mean, I would assume they are, you know, being an elephant, it's probably a good, a good, a good guess. Okay, and I think I see a question here from Gina. And Gina would like to know what sparked your interest in studying mastodons and mammoths? Oh, okay. So um, I, I work at the Geological Survey and we, um, we have an extensive uh, file system and um, Geologist goes back to 1836, and my office was always involved in uh, fossil research and things of that type. If there was any kind of, uh, you know, new finds, people from my office would go. And um, I was reading through some of the files at one point. I noticed the Macedon file was quite big, and I got really interested. The more I would read the articles and the you know, the press clippings and things like that. I really got into it. And uh, so I, you know, went to my, my bosses and I said, look, you know, we have a lot of stuff here that maybe the, the public might want to know. If I put it together in a report um, and they're like, yeah, go for it. And so that's how I got started. So the next question we have is, do you have, um, do you have a favorite New Jersey Mastodon fossil? Oh, uh, well, I like the Manning Mastodon because it's complete, you know, and the other ones are nice, you know, but you can see one that's totally together intact. You can go stand underneath it and you look up at it and how huge it is. And it's pretty, pretty awesome. So I really like that. I haven't seen the other Mastodons, but Manning is my favorite so far also. Yeah. Okay, so have any woolly rhinos been found in New Jersey? I don't know about, I don't, I, uh, as far as I know, no, there's been woolly mammoths, um, but as far as I know, no woolly rhino. But there are some, um, I wanna say, I'm, I don't think so, but maybe. Oh. Okay, I'm muted. Okay. Um, so do you know, um, so like of all the mastodon fossils that uh, were found in New Jersey, um, do you know, I think you mentioned this, but are any of them on display in museums in and around New Jersey? Yeah, you have the, the Mannington at the Rutgers Geology Museum. You have the, the Sus Sussex County Historical Museum in Newton has a display of, of bones, uh, quite a few tusks. Uh, head, things like that. Uh, the Newark Museum um, has a display of some bones from one in Warren County. There used to be one, there's a nature center at the Watchung Reservation. They had a bunch of teeth and other bones, but they closed down the exhibit about 10 years ago and shipped their stuff to the state museum. Um, the state, the Oberg Mastodon isn't on display anymore at the state museum. Um, after like 20, 30 years, they had some issues with uh, preservation. So they had to like take it down and put it in storage until they can, you know, conserve it again. So they just have random bones and teeth there. They don't have a complete mastodon anymore. 
Okay, and for for the ones that you mentioned that were found like in the not in the ocean, the ones um, those mastodon fossils uh, were they only the isolated teeth and bones? Yes, yes. Um, that's all. There were complete ones. There were, were no complete ones in the ocean. Mostly just bones. You know, not bones, but I mean not teeth. So uh, there's a question from Ryan Nipple, and he would like to know. Well, first of all, he says hi to you, and um, he's asking if you remembered him. Um, yep, definitely. And, and he would like to know if um, but there are two missing Ice Age elephant skeletons. Um, so what would happen to fossils when they are exposed, like to the elements? Um, you know, that when they're in the, say, underground or in the pea bog, they're preserved, right? And uh, once the air hits them, they start to, the bones start to deteriorate and become brittle. And, you know, they're going to get soft. So that was a big problem with the, with the Oberg Mastodon when they found it in uh, Vernon. You know, the, the man who found it, he was, uh, first he tried, wanted to sell it, you know, try to make some money. And, you know, he wasn't getting the offers he wanted. So he had in his garage for like a month, you know, or a little longer. And, you know, the, the museum ex experts noticed the bones are starting to like decompose a little bit and get soft. And they told him, look, you know, you had to make a decision because if you keep this here, you know, they put special like shellac back in the day. You know, I guess they put a little shellac and stuff on the bones to, to prevent um, deterioration. So he had to, you know, that's when he decided, okay, I'm going to give it to the museum. So, um, you know, that's basically what happens. Um, the ones in, a few in Warren County were found in the 1800s. A lot of them disappeared because they they didn't know what to do with them at the time, and they they decomposed. So those are some of the remaining ones are at the New York Museum, but not all those bones survived. Um, okay, and um, so do you know like how long it actually? I know you mentioned some of the the conservation process. Do you know approximately like how long that would take? To, to, uh, I think from what I read, it was. Um, um six to nine months you know once they got all the bones mm -hmm. transported them worked on them individually they had to clean them up you know put the uh, preservative on them uh and then numbered them and put them back in place so it was it was you know i think it probably took for the Oberg maybe at least a year before they got it on display from when they found it so we have a question from um Anthony, and you would like to know how, how rare are mammoth and mastodon fossils in New Jersey? They're um, rare, but not like not super rare. You know, um, there have been 52 mastodons discovered in New Jersey. I, a, a few, a much, much less mammoths. I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to say like less, you know, 10 ish, maybe around 10. Um, but the, the, the most of the mastodon discoveries have been in the Midwestern United States, like uh, up by the Great Lakes, like Ohio, Indiana, that area. And then, New, you know, New Jersey has quite a few. And then also Southern New York State has a real lot, you know, but so they're not super rare, but they're, you know, it's not like an everyday find. Um, so someone would like to know, actually, did, uh, did Mastodon's roar, like, you know, if they, do we know what they sounded like? Oh, I don't know. We, you know, really, no, there's no written, you know, record because, you know, the humans who are around and are around. I would say it's like an elephant. So maybe, you know, and, you know, they have, they make noises and roar. So it pro probably, I would say. But uh, what did mammoths and mastodons eat? So the mammoths ate. Uh, grasses, like, you know, like um, tall grasses, like you see in the field in the summertime, that kind of uh, vegetation. And they, their teeth were flat, so they can really chew them, chew it and grind it. The mastodons ate twigs, uh, you know, sticks, bark, um, more like woodier type plants. So, yeah, they had different, different diets. So what, um, did, uh, did giant ground slots live in New Jersey too? They did. There were some, yep. There were some discoveries. Yeah. Do you know where, where they were discovered or like which place? Um, 
I do actually I made a map of some Pleistocene discoveries. Um, I'd have to look at it. I can get back to. Get yeah, back. that's fine. Okay. Okay, and um, so we have a lot of questions coming in now. Um, so, what else have you studied besides mastodons and mammoths? Oh, I do a lot of different things. So, um, in the past, I, 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 um, I'm the, cre uh, the creator of art. We have a, a New Jersey landslide database. So I map all the landslides in the state when they occur and I categorize them. And uh, I did a report about 10, 12 years ago on this landslides. Um, and I make that, it's available to the public, you know, our database. Um, I did a big study recently. It's in, almost published yet, but not quite on New Jersey Springs. So um, just mapping all the springs that we could find. I had, you know, five coworkers of my, myself and I did the report. And we did a study, we picked 14, and we analyzed the, the water quality in the springs. Um, right now, ongoing, I have a couple reports I'm working on. One is Amber um, in New Jersey, um, and which is like, you know, a tree sap that uh, sometimes would, uh, would encase insects and things like that, you know, 30 million years ago. Um, Sayreville was a big area for Amber, and um, uh, so I just, I'm writing a report about that, and also I'm working on a report of measuring all of the state's waterfalls, uh, and I'm going to go to all of them and, and measure them and write about it and take pictures, and so it's a, you know, a lot of varied, a lot of different things. I work at the geological survey, anything related to geology and you know, paleontology we're into doing. And so we get a lot of, I get a lot of options. So that's just, that's just like, you know, some of the things I worked on. Really interesting. And um, we actually got even more questions now. Everyone's interested about your work. So I'll read all of them to you. Okay. Uh, so what is your typical day at work like? Well, um, you know, I'm really lucky. I can go to work and do something different and interesting every day. Um, you know, so like today, I do. I also do another project where you know I got interested in the Mastodon information because part of my job I do um, a project called Data Preservation, and it's a, it's a yearly grant that we get to preserve our paper data, like we get from the U.S. Geological Survey, and we have a lot of uh, historical documents. So we scan digitally. So, you know, if there's a fire, the building burns down, we don't lose it, it'll be saved, you know? So uh, I work on that part of my day. Um, like I'll work on my, water, whatever report I'm working on at the time, like right now it's the amber and the waterfalls in the past, you know, was the mastodons and other, and landslides and other things. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it depends what, you know, what's going on at the moment. Uh, like I get to do field work, you know. Um, so one, once every couple of weeks, I'll go out in the field with uh, whatever I'm doing, you know, like locating the spring. We have a spring, the springs database. We're just continually updating that or I'm going out to see a, uh, a landslide or a waterfall at the moment. So it, it all depends, you know, how things are going. And, you know, um, that's, that's, how it, that's what a typical day is. Okay, and um, so there are a lot of questions about the landslides here. So how often do landslides occur in New Jersey? Uh, there's, there's, I'd say from like one to 15 or 20 per year, depending on the weather. Um, some years you might get one, like this 2021 was a really active year because of Hurricane Ida in September. Uh, I forget what the rainfall amount was, but it was pretty bad. Um, and there was like eight or nine really big ones, uh, a bunch affected houses. Um, so it depends on like hurricane season, really, and nor'easters. Um, uh, you know, every few years there's a big storm and we get a lot. There was a lot of them are caused a lot of damage. It's, you know, people don't really reckon, not really associate New Jersey with landslides because they don't really make the newspaper and people aren't aware of them. Because they usually hit a, lo a local area, like one house gets demolished or 
a small area gets in, you know, has a problem. But um, it, it's a big problem. And, you know, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage usually a year from them. You know, uh, there's a lot of rock falls along roadways, um, different places. So it's, it's, a, it's an act, you know, New Jersey has some steep cliffs up on the Palisades on the Hudson River. There's some really big ones. And it was like 2012, there was a huge one. Um, luckily, you know, no one was hiking on the trail below, but it was, it was big and you know, no one got hurt. There was no damage, but there's a lot. And um, so have you ever encountered any like houses or buildings like when you were out doing field work that were on unstable land, like because of like landslides? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. There was one up in, uh, it's called in Mountain Lake. It's in Warren County. And um, there was a I forget what year it was, maybe 2015, 14, a uh, big hurricane, 10 inches of rain, and the house actually eventually collapsed because the, the land underneath it uh, collapsed. Um, and, you know, three or four houses around it had to be evacuated. The house had to be, you know, uh, demolished. So, um, you know, yeah, it's, and there was a couple in Lodi a few years ago where, you know, the houses were undermined. You know, so. And uh, what is the the biggest waterfall in New Jersey? You mentioned waterfalls, so someone uh, is interested in that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's up on the Hudson River. Uh, Hudson River on the Palisades. Um, it's two hundred fifty feet tall. Um, I forget the name of it at the moment, but uh, yeah, it's not a com it's not one complete cascade. It's like three. But it's continuous fall, so it's 200, 250 feet high. That's not the not the Patterson one, right? Patterson is seventy seven feet. Oh wow! Okay, so this is bigger. But it's yeah, Pat, but Patterson has the largest uh, gallons of water in the state, and it's it's the largest um, east, a uh, second largest besides Niagara, east of the Mississippi in terms of water flow. So Patterson's big in a different way. It's not tall as tall, but it's it's volume of water. So there's another question about waterfalls. So um, someone noticed that there's more like waterfalls like in the north part of the state, but not so much in southern Jersey. Like, is there any reason for that? Uh, yeah, all the the mountains are in the northern part of the state, and uh, geology has a lot to do with it. Um, the harder rock, which doesn't erode, it's more prone to um, you know, waterfalls because um, you have the steep cliff and it will go over. Um, whereas South Jersey, it's like mostly sandy, clay soils. And there's one in Tinton Falls, which is pretty nice. It's like, you know, almost 10 feet tall. Um, but that's about it, you know, for South Jersey, you know, most are north of Trenton, New Brunswick area. So it's, it's really a geology and topography. So you mentioned Amber. Uh, do people like are is there enough amber like for people to actually make anything out of them I know like people make jewelry and how old are the amber deposits uh like um like uh 30 million years in New Jersey um I think New Jersey is like when I you know my research research is like one of the it's like the second most productive place uh Lithuania I think or Estonia might be the main one um can you make, it was a question, can you make jewelry out of it or? Like, do people do it? Like, do they do anything? Like, do they yeah. use it to, um, do they use it to make anything out of it or? Um, um, you know, I'm not sure about that end of it for the New Jer Jersey Amber. Um, I'm assuming they do. I mean, I think you see it all over the place. And, you know, um, I think the New Jersey Amber was a little more brittle than other parts of the world. So, but um, it, it looks like you could, yeah. I, I, so I don't see why not. I think they probably have. And um, Julie, our bug expert, wants to know, are insects found in New Jersey amber? Oh, yes. Uh, ants. I don't, I don't have the paper in front of me, so I can't give you the scientific name. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, one of the earliest ticks was found in New Jersey amber, maybe the oldest tick. Um, but there's some dispute they think maybe a bird from South America brought it here, but, um, 
so yeah, definitely ant. The earliest ant I think is also a New Jersey amber. Wow. Okay. And um, so, what is your favorite place uh, that you've visited so far for field work? Oh my gosh, it's a hard question. <laughs> I mean, no, oh, there's so many beautiful places in, in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Buttermilk Falls up in Sussex County is pretty cool. You know, mm -hmm. if anybody's ever been there, you know, if you haven't, it's worth a trip. Um, you know, the Paris of Falls is amazing. I like mm -hmm. going there. Um, there's a waterfalls in, uh, I think it's uh, Milburn, West Orange, it's called Hemlock Falls. Um, it's in uh, Watchung Reservation, no, uh, South Mountain Reservation. And it just has a really nice setting. It's like maybe 25 feet tall, but it's, you know, um, it's beautiful. And that's a really, I like going back there when I can. And um, another question is, have you ever seen any snakes while doing field work? And if yes, what kinds? Uh, I don't recall snakes. I don't think, I mean, I've seen them around my yard, but I don't, I haven't seen them any doing any field work. Um, mostly just garter snakes. And uh, have you seen any bears? I saw one bear during field work and actually it was in a car and it ran and ran in front of me across the road. So and I where where was that? This was in um, West Milford Township in Passaic County uh -huh. on route, uh, along Route 23. Mm. Yeah, so never saw it. Well, I mean, I'm shocked because sometimes you go a mile into the woods and you, know, you never know, but I never never saw one in the, during field work in the woods, just driving. Yeah, well, thank you. I think that's the end of uh, the questions. I don't think I missed any, but uh, that was a lot of questions. Thank you so much. That was very informative and, and very, uh, very cool, very interesting. So thank you so much for taking the time and, and speaking to us tonight. And thank you to our audience for joining us tonight. Um, and mark your calendars for April 21st at 6 p.m. We will have our next museum event, um, which will be our Ask a Geologist series. So the topic for the event will be geologic faults and folds and other really cool geologic features. Um, so Dr. Barry Hanafi will, is an assistant teaching professor um, at Rutgers in the Earth and Planetary Sciences Department. And he will be discussing these features and what they mean for the landscape. So don't forget um, April 21st at 6 p.m., faults and folds. And thank you once again, Ted. Um, that was really great. And have a good night, everybody.